Okay, so Ben Malal is you know living the e-commerce lifestyle right now, uh, which is why he couldn't make it on this presentation. You guys can all see my screen now. Okay, awesome. Um, so that's good. So um, where do we go here? Right there, Ben Malal. So Ben Malal, when I was looking for someone to handle the Facebook aspect of of our course and our project, Ben Malal was an obvious choice. The guy uh, has been on the news multiple times talking about Facebook's al algorithm. He's sort of like a a nationally recognized expert on Facebook ads. He's taught thousands of people how to get these kind of results on Facebook ads. You can see um, he's, he's got a Facebook course that, that, he, that he made, I think, last year, I think, um, that, that has just helped a ton of people um, get their feet wet with Facebook, wet, he, or Facebook ads. He really understands the nuts and bolts of how to set up your campaigns, how to optimize your campaigns. But before that, he has a really strong understanding of what needs to happen before you ever even log into Facebook with how you story tell about your products. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, just a little bit. Um, so, uh, okay, so let's start, let's, let's start on the 90-10 rule. So basically, like I said, when I inter interviewed like the Tans and Tim Bird and um, all, all the top experts on, on Facebook ads, on e-commerce, 90% or every one of them spent over 90 or over percent of all their advertising budget on Facebook. So it's super important. Uh, and, and, and so, but then within Facebook ads, we like to say it's probably 90% about the product and the story. The products that you pick and the story that you tell about them, how you frame them, how you build your creatives so that you get people to stop and actually uh, view your ads. This is the most key part about Facebook ads that kind of people don't talk about. It's easy to talk about, okay, you need to have this um, campaign naming structure. You need to have, here's how you should be optimizing. You should optimize first on engagement and then add to cart and then purchase as you build up your, your audiences. Here's what the size of your budget should be. Um, and we'll just cover a few of these, these top line things from, from Ben's presentation. But really, 90% uh, is, is how you, you pitch your product and your story. 10% are the nuts and bolts. And then when it comes to the nuts and bolts, the, the real secret to Facebook ads and the secrets to all forms of marketing. We can't, I come from this affiliate world uh, where essentially you're really just, you, you have less control of your product than you even do with e-commerce, where you're really just arbitraging attention. You're basically paying people to come on your website, you're paying Google to bring people to your website, and then you hope enough people do enough actions to pay for the traffic uh, that, that, you, that you brought them there with. And, and so when, that, when it comes to that, there's nothing that is a substitute for mass systematic testing. It's not the most sexy thing always. Demetrius is gonna get uh, more into, into numbers and why they're so important. But obviously, the only way you're really gonna be able to build a, a, an incredible e-commerce business is by testing a lot of things. Testing a lot of audiences. And what we're going to give you, what this course gives you, is the structure that you're going to be using for all this testing. How to do it in the most efficient way possible. How to look at your Facebook ads and know that you're hitting every uh, ad group, every interest that you need to. And you're going to have all your creatives lined up in the right way. Your budget's tight. And then you'll be able to see when something jumps out at you. When you set your pixel up right, you set your ads up right, you set your campaigns up right, you'll all of a sudden see, oh, that ad group right there. That ad group is making 3x return on my ad spend, time to scale that ad group. So, uh, but, but it really, you're only going to get that by doing mass systematic testing. And that's what, that's what all of our lessons kind of teach you how to do. So when it comes to optimization, you want to optimize on purchase whenever possible. That's kind of a no-brainer. That, that's the top line learning I want you to take from optimization. Whenever possible, you want to tell the Facebook uh, pixel when, a pixel when a purchase has occurred and optimize towards that. And there's some ways that you can build up to that. It's because you, you can't, won't be able to optimize on purchases right away until you have some. Um, but essentially, you always want to focus on purchases. Uh, when it comes to setting ad set budgets, a good rule of thumb is CPA times three. This is something to, to note. Uh, that, so say you're selling a product. Uh, that is uh, $10, and for you to make money on it in the in the long run for your LTV, you need to be making, uh, you need to be selling it for $6. So that makes your CPA $6, that's your target CPA that you need to sell that product for, and then so a good testing budget for an ad set would be $18 on the low end uh, when you're testing different ad sets. Ad sets are where you put all your different kind of targeting, uh, and your targeting is your audience, uh, and so you, so you essentially, you create a group of interests that you're interested in targeting, uh, and then you aim to build up an audience size that's between one and three million people and test it with a, um, a budget that is of around three, three times your target CPA and you're able to, and, and test as many of these as you can. You're gonna have to stack interests on top of each other in, in a lot of cases in order to get those audience sizes, but you really want your audience sizes big enough 
so that Facebook can really search for your exact audience members within each of them. Then location. I know, you know, when I first started Facebook advertising, especially for for uh, ISAC training, right out of the gate, I was throwing up ads, and 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 it took me about a week before I realized I was getting amazingly cheap clicks, but they were all from countries where nobody bought my product. Uh, Nepal. I don't know if anyone here is from Nepal, but uh, we had a ton of people from Nepal uh, on my original advertising campaign. So what we do now, and something Ben advocates as well, is you break your campaigns into two tiers. You target your top five geos by either by GDP. Uh, which is where where people are, are are making you know countries that are making the most money, or if you already know where your target market is, to break it down into your top five places, and then your second tier would be your second top 25, either GDP countries or countries where you know your sales are coming from. Make sure that you're targeting groups uh, within countries that you know where people are going to buy your products, or or if not, start with these GDP um, countries because they're the ones that are most likely to make online purchases. Um, and then your ad. Your ad is the most important part of, of your Facebook campaign. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit more here. Um, so you want to make sure that you are selling your product, or sorry, your story of your product and not necessarily the product itself. People don't buy products. They buy the stories they play in their heads when you advertise their product. They think about, they, 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 they have to hit people not just with, here, this product will you need this product. It's you need this product because it's going to make your life better in the following ways. Or even more powerful, it's going to prevent this really bad thing from happening, which is an example we're about to show. Um, people buy the stories that they tell about products. They buy the transformation that they will undergo by buying this product, not the product itself. So you always need to think about like what's behind the product, which is why you need to have angles for the things that you sell. Um, okay, so here's an example right here. We've got an LED dog collar. Uh, the first one on the on the left here, it offers right off the bat a 50% uh, coupon and just shows a picture of it and says, here, buy it. There's, there's a little scarcity aspect. There's only 250 left. Um, and then the one on the right starts with over eight, over six million dogs were killed last year. Dog car accidents or car accidents are very scary and very real. So it starts right off the bay, uh, right off the, the, the front with a very emotional, very uh, you know fear-based uh, call out that essentially allows people to uh, to make sure that their that their story is inspiring or that their story grabs people um, by the throat and lets them know that this product is going to solve a problem in their life, even a problem that they don't have, a problem that they might have in the future. This product will solve it. And so instead of just advertising the product, you advertise a story behind the product or an angle into that product. And whenever you think about products, whenever you scan over um, competitive research intelligence when it comes to, to driving to, or, or running new products, make sure you're always thinking about the story behind the product, the angles into that product that can resonate with your audience. 